Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and this is our 13th video tutorial on SSIS interview questions and answers series. So let's continue on this one. So our first question is, what are the latest features in SSIS? So in SSIS, we got the enhanced support for working with the big data, including the ability to use the SSIS to load data into and extract data from the Hadoop and Azure HD Insight. We also got the enhanced support for working with the cloud data sources including the ability to connect to the Azure SQL database and Azure SQL data warehouse. And we have also got the improved support for deploying and managing the SSIS projects in Azure cloud. And in the new versions of SSIS we also got the improved support for debugging and troubleshooting the SSIS packages. Like in older versions of SSIS it was very hard to debug the code inside the script component but now we can easily debug the code inside the script component. Now in the second question we will look at exporting the data to multiple SQL tables from large table. So we got a scenario that suppose there is a very large table with millions of records and we want to filter the data on any condition example city wise and we want the data to be in the relevant table for example the city daily data should be inside the daily table. So our data has wide variety of such distinct city. So what will be the effective way to split the data in different table in an optimized way. So if you want to export the data to multiple cities according to the city column then the best possible way will be that we can use the for each loop container with ADO enumerator in SSIS. So what we can do we can use a execute SQL task and in the execute SQL task we can just select the distinct cities from the very large table and then we can assign the result set as a full result set to an object SSIS variable and then we can use the for each loop container with ADO enumerator and then we can declare an SSIS variable as city of type a string and then we can configure it inside the for each loop container. Now what will happen when the for each loop container will run it will loop through all the cities one by one. Now what we can do we can use a data flow task and in the data flow task we can take an OLEDB source and in the OLEDB source we can write a condition like select a star from very large table where city equal to question mark and then we can map the question mark parameter from the city SSIS variable and alternatively we can also write this particular query in a SSIS variable like select a star from very large table where city equal to and then the city from the SSIS variable okay and we can just put this particular query in an SSIS variable and then we can use this variable from the OLEDB source. And then we can take the OLEDB destination and we can map the OLEDB source with the OLEDB destination. And then while configuring the OLEDB destination, we can take the table name or view name variable fast load. And then from the variable list, we can select the city variable. So what will happen that for each city, the value of the city will change and that's how the table name will also change. So this way we can export the data from a very large table to multiple cities effectively. Our third question is how do you stop long running SSIS packages? So if you are running the SSIS package from the Visual Studio and the package is running from a very long time then you can use the stop button in the SSIS designer window to stop the SSIS package. And if the package is running from the SQL agent job then you can right click on the SQL agent job and you can click on stop button. And if the SSIS package is running some query on the SQL Server instance, then you can get the SP ID of that query using the SP who to active and you can kill that particular SP ID. So it will stop the execution of the SSIS package. Our fourth question is that you migrated the SSIS packages from one server to another server. Now how you will verify that the packages are running properly or not? So if you have migrated the packages to another server and if you have deployed the SSIS packages to SSIS catalog and scheduled them to be run at a particular schedule or even running them manually then after execution of the SSIS packages you can check the all execution reports to view a history of all the times the packages has been run and the status of each execution. So if the package got failed then you can easily know that the package got failed and you can also check the failure message as well error description so you know like why the package got failed and if the package ran successfully then you can verify that the package has produced the expected results by running the queries against the databases or examining the data in the destination tables 
and you can also add the logging to the SSIS packages so that you know like what the packages are doing if the packages are failing then they should insert the logging information to the logging table so that you know that the packages are failing and and the SSIS packages should insert the array description as well so that you know like why the packages are failing now our fifth question is how to find the bottlenecks in SSIS so to find the bottlenecks in an SSIS package you can try the following approaches the first approach is that use the SSIS performance counters to identify the performance issues the SSIS performance counters can provide the information about the packages execution time number of rows processed and the other metrics as well that can help you to identify the bottlenecks the second option is that you can add logging and probably the custom logging to the SSIS packages in such a way that it will log the start time and the end time for all the tasks inside the SSIS package so this can help you to know like which task inside the SSIS packages are taking the longest time to complete and then we can work on fixing those particular tasks so I think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video thank you so much